Hi, so this video is going to show you some of the different types of questioning on the MSTEP preview for Spring 15. Again, this preview that is available at the Michigan Department of Education's website um, is currently just showing uh, about 20 different sample questions from both math and English language arts. They are not grade level specific. At the end of January, there will be a um, new test released on the Michigan Department of Education's website that is grade level and content specific. Um, on our last video, we walked through some of the tools here, um, how to use those, how students can use those while testing, um, flagging their tests, pausing, reviewing, and so on and so forth. This video is going to go through um, the different types of questions um, that are available and how the students would actually select a response. So the first question is pretty straightforward. It is a multiple choice question, and for students to answer a multiple choice question, they're going to use the pointer tool and then select the response that they would like. The multiple choice questions have only one correct answer, so if they move to another response, it will automatically deselect their previous response. I'm going to click Next to go to the next question. This question here is um, giving some graphic data and asking a question. Again, students can use their tools like the highlighter to um, highlight text that they need or to highlight on their actual um, graph. They can also use the sticky note tool. And you'll notice in the questions, they give suggestions to students on actually using the sticky note tool um, in order to uh, help them determine the answer. So here we've um, got a question where the data shows 25 and then the data shows 15 and we need to have the difference and it's giving a numeric only, so note the, the hint down here, um, response and then hitting next. Uh, this type of question here is asking students to create a graph and to create the graph they're going to use the data over here. Again, they can use their highlighting tool um, to help them um, follow the question better. And over on the graph, if they uh, select the item, the case bar here, and then uh, move it up to the proper number, it will fill in the graph. Now if they move it um, to that number and then decide it should be at a different location, all they have to do is move to the other location and click. And again, um, if they would like it to go uh, lower. I'm going to move to the next question. This question here I think is interesting and is one that you would want to spend some time with students talking about because the um, directions remind students that there are, this is a matching question, but also that there might be some options that have no answer. Um, there might be some options that have more than one answer. So it's important for students to read these practice hints because they give those extra directions. I'm going to highlight where it says that. Okay, so it says select a fraction on the left side and a blue box appears. Then select its match on the right side and a blue line connects. So giving direction how the technology should look. Then it reminds us some fractions have no matches and some may have more than one. And then it talks about how to undo them. Alright, so down here um, I'll give an example. Two eights. If I click on two eights, the blue box appears and then I decide that this over here is a match and when I click on it, the line will appear between the two. Um, one-fourth here. If I have any option here that would represent one-fourth, that would also be the same as two-eighths. So I'm going to show that line connecting across here. Um, here I have one-third, but I don't have a representation of one-third over there, but two-sixths is the same as one-third, and so I'm going to cross that over. And then three-sixths I don't see connecting to this one up here. This is divided into fifths, and this one's divided into fourths. Um, it could be one-half, it could be a two-eighths, um, um, or four-eighths, excuse me, but it, it could not be three-sixths. So I'm going to say that this one does not have a correct answer. Here again we have an item where there are um, several um, examples displayed and it's asking for more than one answer. So I'm going to highlight the word all, even though it's already in bold. Choose all of the boxes that could be a mass um, representing a box of pasta that when rounded to the nearest hundred is 400 grams. So I can select more than one response. 
on this item here um, is using the area model and asking for you to enter um, numbers in the in the bottom. Uh, this one right here, you drag and drop items onto the bookshelf. So it's asking for students to put 18 bookshelf or books on the bookcase, and they have to have the same number of books on each shelf. And so they drag and they drop. If they put something on the shelf, say the four that they don't want, they click on it and they return it back to the list over here. Once they have the answer the way they would like it, they hit next. Here we have a, um, another two-part question where it's show, uh, discussing Luke going to the library, the library being seven one hundredths of a kilometer away from their home, and that they need to place a dot somewhere along this line that represents um, that number, and then also place that number here in the, um, in the text box. So there's two parts to this question. Um, here again we have two parts. One is um, a portion where she's going to have to do some computing and in the second part they actually have to do a constructed response. So the explaining how the remainder from part A can help answer the question. So there are some written response answers to mathematical questions. In this item here um, the, the student is asked to um, read a small selection and then choose a source that is most likely. So it's not in more than one, and when they select the source, it highlights. If I select a different source, it deselects my original um, option. Um, this one here, again, has a reading selection, and I'm going to use my highlighting tool to note to students that it's asking for um, two different notes that support the student's opinion. I can use my line guide tool to help read this better. Oops, I've got to actually click on the tool. And so the student can read a line at a time using the tool. And then use the selection tool, the pointer, to make their options. So I have two selected here. If I try to select a third, it says ma maximum selections have been reached. And I'll say OK. So it's not possible to select three. Um, if I only select one, I can move on, but it will only be marked with partial credit if that first selection is correct. Here they're asking the student to select one sentence that has information um, within this reading selection. So when I click on a sentence, it will highlight. Um, in the next selection, students are asked to read some book titles and select two book titles that have errors in the capitalization. So like the other ones, when they select the items, they will highlight. If they select a third one, it will tell them that they cannot select a third one. They have to deselect one before they can change their response. And this item over here, students are going to read the selection on the left and then do a paragraph, um, write a paragraph on the right responding to the prompt. And this question over here, students are going to read a selection and then answer a multiple choice question um, according to uh, the prompt. Now, this one is important to look at because it says more text below. So we need to teach students that they need to scroll down. And to scroll, um, I am moving the roller bar on my mouse. If they're on a Chromebook, they will um, tap down to scroll or they can grab the scroll bar right here to scroll down. They can also hit the down arrow on their keyboard or the up arrow to move the reading selection up and down. So there's lots of different ways to move the selection. Just point out to the students, uh, most importantly, that they need to continue reading the entire selection. They can also highlight right on the selection as they're reading. Um, so if they click their highlighting tool and say use the highlighter, they can highlight items. One. Um, test taking strategy you might provide for them is to read the question first um, so that they know what they're looking for in the reading selection. So this one is which words best describe um, this individual in the legends of blackfish. So we're looking for descriptive words as we're um, reading. And if we find something that we notice about his character, we might add a sticky note off to the side and 
um, write those items down on the sticky note to keep track of how many times we might have seen these different kinds of personality traits as we are reading. Again, similar item where they're reading the same selection, um, but the question um, choice changes. And here there it's to select a um, sentence that best fits the central message of the passage. And another multiple choice question, and another one, and uh, another item that's asking for uh, what best supports their answer in Part A. Okay, so I've gone through all the questions. You've seen that there is uh, quite a variety between the multiple choice, the um, short response, that just entering text, to calculations. If there are calculations that require a uh, um, a calculator. A calculator will appear up here on the tool guide. Um, there are constructive responses. There are select one correct answer. There are select two correct answers. There are matching where there are no correct answers um, embedded into the question. So there are lots of different things that students need to become more comfortable with before test day. Uh, if you would like your students to log into this practice assessment, you'll go to the Michigan Department of Education click on student assessment or just click on the MSTEP picture on the front page and then find the practice assessment link and paste it into a Chrome browser. It does not work on Internet Explorer or Safari.